Now let's get going folks and we'll begin like we will every day here on Menzoid Mornings with something that's really grinding my gears. Time now for the Menzoid monologue. Well, it is official when Ontario, rather when a former Ontario Premier Dalton McGuinty saddled the province with the so-called Green Energy Act, Ontarians bought a proverbial pig in a poke. Oh, and incidentally, the pig in a poke saying dates back to the Middle Ages. A poke was a bag and a piglet would be put in that bag for sale. Unless, of course, one was dealing with a very unscrupulous merchant who would place a cat in the bag, hardly a desired form of meat. Hence, it came to be that one should never buy a pig in a poke. And wow, thanks to the Green Energy Act, Ontario taxpayers now have a rabid tabby with fleas in their collective laps. In a nutshell, the Fraser Institute released a report a few days ago noting that the Green Energy Act is doing the precise opposite of what it was intended to do. Namely, it is killing jobs and the program is not environmentally friendly. The report's author, Ross McKittrick, notes 80% of Ontario's generation of electricity from wind power occurs at times and seasons so far out of phase with demand that the entire output is surplus and is exported at a substantial loss. Data shows Ontario now loses on average $24,000 per operating hour on such sales, totaling $200 million annually. Oh, by the way, the findings from the Fraser Institute comes on the heels of a of Provincial Auditor General Jim McCarter's scathing report, which noted the province has already lost more than $2 billion in electricity exports because power generated by wind often has to be exported at a loss. Indeed, whereas Ontario used to have the lowest energy rates in the world, a key component to attracting manufacturing, the province now has the highest energy rates in all of North America. But wait, there's more. Energy rates are expected to increase by a good 40 to 50 percent in the near future. Meanwhile, the Fraser report indicates that manufacturing employment has dropped by 50 percent under the Act, while costs have risen by 29 percent. Despite this fiscal pain, Ontario's Green Energy Act has not and will not result in a meaningful reduction in air pollution. Wow, folks, Kermit the Frog was right. It ain't easy being green. In fact, as Ontario residents open their electricity bills, it is downright torturous embracing emerald-hued propaganda. Tory energy critic Vic Vitelli says, worst of all, the pain incurred via the Green Energy Act has been all for naught. There's no more green energy today than there was before the act was inflicted upon the province back in 2009. For example, Fidelity notes wind power does not replace coal power. Rather, coal-generated power was replaced by electricity generated by nuclear and gas. Thus, while coal power is down 14%, nuclear and gas are up by the precise same number, 14%. Clearly, it would have been far more beneficial to retrofit the mothballed coal plants with scrubbers. Meanwhile, wind power has replaced another renewable that would be water. The amount of hydroelectricity generated in 2009 was about 25%. That's gone to 22%. Wind now sits at 3% of production. Can you say mugs game, folks? So it is that cheaper forms of energy are told to ratchet back production, only to be replaced by very expensive wind power. But hey, the optics look good when the Birkenstock Brigade drive their Priuses through rural Ontario and gaze upon those enormous windmills getting their power from heaven-sent breezes. Of course, if you actually live in those rural areas of Ontario in which those wind turbines have been located, then you might have a different opinion about eyesores that resemble meandering Martian tripods right from the pages of War of the Worlds. Oh, and get this, folks, by sheer coincidence, those areas of rural Ontario infected with this blight, well, they just happen to be non-liberal ridings. Funny that. But Premier Dad saw this as being progressive and enlightened and doing the right thing from an environmental perspective. And don't expect Kathleen Wynne to do anything radically different. In fact, 
Embracing the spirit of meet the new boss, same as the old boss, Premier Two Mums, defended the Green Energy Act last week. Here's what she said, quote, if we're going to deal with the pollution, if we're going to deal with the greenhouse gases, the path that we're on is the right one. Um, too bad that path leads to a minefield when it comes to the overall well-being of the province. And in case anyone is naive enough to think things will get better in the future, consider this. Even by the most optimistic predictions, the International Energy Agency estimates that on a global basis, come 2035, only 2.4% 2 of our energy will come from wind and 0.8% from solar. Bottom line, as the saying goes, never buy a pig in a poke. And to paraphrase another saying from days of yore, beware of liberals bearing gifts. And that's the Menzoid monologue.